prebiotics. What's the difference between a pre and a probiotic? So prebiotics are food for the gut microbes. All right, so rather than it being a capsule filled with living microorganisms, instead what you're doing is you're sprinkling some fertilizer on your gut microbiome and you're helping it to grow more effectively. Typically, when we talk about prebiotics, what we're referring to is generally fi fiber, specifically soluble fiber, which comes from plant foods, or in some cases, we're talking about resistant starch, which also comes from plant foods. What makes them unique is that these prebiotic foods for our microbiome pass all the way through our stomach, our small intestine to get all the way down to the colon. And in that spot in the colon, that's when our gut microbes they get to feast on these prebiotic fibers. And as a result, they grow stronger. But the beautiful thing is this, they also turn around and metabolize that fiber to release what we call postbiotics. So there's prebiotics, there's probiotics, and now we're talking about postbiotics. And what I'm referring to here are short chain fatty acids, which are absolutely critical for human health, particularly for gut health. What's the best source to get these prebiotics? Well, the best source should be your diet. And the right way to approach that is to recognize that prebiotics come from plant foods and different plants offer different prebiotics. So diversity of plants in your diet is the right way. In the study that they did, what they showed that if you exceeded 30 plants per week, that's where the benefit came from. 30 different plants. 30 different plants. The bottom line is more is better. You don't cut yourself off at 30. You just strive to do your best. What are the kings of prebiotic foods? When you look at prebiotic foods, you'll see people celebrate specifically Jerusalem artichokes, asparagus, garlic, um, leeks, shallots, you know, things in that variety, onions, because they contain inulin. But there are many different types of prebiotics that exist. Let me give you an example. Oatmeal. Oatmeal is a fantastic source of prebiotics. It has both soluble fiber and resistant starch. And all of that feeds your gut microbiome. Seaweed, believe it or not, is a great source of prebiotics. Potatoes, look, I'm not talking about potato chips, but if you take a potato and you heat it up and then you allow it to cool down, during that cooling process, it will produce resistant starch. That you know potato mash that you got in your fridge, that is a great source of resistant starch for your gut microbiome. If you're looking at a fiber supplement, what I want people to understand is that there's different types of fiber, soluble and insoluble fiber. And it's the soluble fiber that is prebiotic. And which prebiotics do you routinely take? I use wheat dextrin on uh, virtually a daily basis. And then I oftentimes will also take beta-glucan. Beta-glucan is the type of prebiotic that you find in the oatmeal that we're talking about. But are they pills, powders? The, the the wheat dextrin is actually a powder. Yeah. And because it's soluble fiber, it completely dissolves. The beta-glucan I actually take as a capsule. Yeah. I'm just making notes here because I'm obviously about to go off and order this. So. <laughs>